So, this is the end of everything. I spend quite a lot of time on Freenode Hash Pearl, uh, which is a fairly good fun channel. Um, one of the things that we hear so many times from people who are new to Pearl is, I can't use CPAN. You are missing the point of Pearl. I, it, it drives me insane. I, I really, I, I want to teach them how to write good Pearl. Good Pearl requires CPAN. The urge to end these people arises. And so, I do, why, why do you think you can't use CPAN? And they say, oh, I'm not Root. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I used, I, my response used to be, okay, here is how you configure cpan.pm to do the right thing and install into your home directory. And 20 minutes later of trying to explain this to a newbie, ah! <laughs> so I wrote local lib. <coughs> Which meant, so far so good. Now, it's one shell command and you can install into your home directory. Excellent. And then they go, oh, I need to deploy a single file. Oh, not again. <laughs> so I go, okay, well, that's, that's okay. Let, let's, let's take par and try and make par do the right thing. Because par can pack a single file for you. And 20 minutes later, we are back to going, ah! Big I par is wonderful, but it has 27 different command line options. And none of them ever do what I expected. Uh, so I wrote out Fatpacker, uh, which only handles the pure Perl part, but does it very simply. And Miyagawa then used um, Fatpacker and local lib in CPAN minus, which is why that works as a single file. So excellent. So far, so good. Uh, and then they say this script needs to run once. It's a throwaway. 200 machines. And they go, oh, well, yeah, well, fat packing is way too much effort when it's only going to run once. Uh, uh, they, they, you do have a point there. I can kind of see that it seems like too much work. So, I, okay, what am I going to do then? Well, uh, uh, th th there, must be, there must be an answer, there must be an answer. Uh, ah, hang on. Pearl has underscore underscore data, yes? We all know about this. Once it's seen underscore data, that reads data. Um, and then it keeps going until it sees underscore n. Now normally people just use this to make the compiler stop before their pod starts. Um, but the interesting thing here is, Pearl stops parsing. Hmm. Well, if you say Perl dash, Perl now reads the script from stdin. But when it reaches underscore n, stdin stays open. Aha! We have an idea here. <laughs> what you do is you fat pack a bootstrap script, um, and then you can open an SSH connection to the host. You have a stdin and a stdout. You send the fat pack bootstrap script. And then you send underscore n. And now your script executes, and you have stood in and stood out, and you can send it data and get the results. So, okay, what about communications? Well, lines of JSON on the wire. JSON is nice and simple, it's line based, you can type it yourself for testing, it all works. So, JSON has this thing called filter single key object, which allows you to say when you see a hash ref with only this key, you can inflate it into an object. Okay, so I've done that, great. And then, what I do is I have a proxy object using autoload. Which means, inside the autoload, I go to my remote and I tell it to call that method. And it sends that across the wire as JSON and gets the result back. Uh, but, what about other modules? I mean, you know, what, what about modules that I want to use during the code? I don't want to, if I have to re fat back it every time, I'm back to the same problem. So, um, ah, but, at Fatpacker uses a code ref in at ink to do the loading. Okay. Well, there's no reason I have to only have one of those, right? In fact, I could have an object. I could use both. So, I have a hook object 
it has an ink method, and then it goes, I'm going, please give me the source code for the module, and then I open a string file handle to the source code and return that. And if you put that in that ink, that gets called. Uh, so what, what's dollar self sender? Well, that bit is actually easy. I've already built a system for calling remote objects, so the sender is a remote object running on the host machine that knows how to look through the at ink of the host machine to send it across the wire to the far end. Uh, literally, you just pull out the arch-specific directories from at ink, find the file, open it, send it out across the wire. And then to add a little sugar, if you write a method called new colon colon on, if you give Perl a fully qualified method name, it dispatches it according to the package you gave it. So, hmm, I, have, I wrote email with lexicals. Email with lexicals is a pure Perl, uh, basically, REPL core. And that means I have an email cage in pure Perl that can ship over the wire. Which means I can literally call new colon colon on user at host, will SSH in, start up, sends email with lexicals over the wire using the sender, um, just host will work and that just calls it, user at invokes the sudo binary for you so you can get to be root on the far side, and I can send it any Perl code I like, and it hangs on to the lexicals, and I can run this on one machine, and that Perl code is running on the other machine that I ssh into. Uh, you can use any class for this. You don't even have to have loaded it locally, because provided it's a valid class name, Perl will call new colon colon on without having to have required it. Hand it a connection object, hand it constructor arguments, you get an object back. I can even do it for subroutines. So I ask the connection, give me a code ref that's going to call hostname out of sys hostname on the other machine, and then call it, and it works. Do you think you still can't use CBAN? Yes, you can! Even in a one-off, <coughs> even with no installation, all I require on the other side is for SSH to be able to start to pull 5.8. So it even works on Red Hat. <laughs> <laughs> Object Remote will be shipped to CPAN in the next week. Somebody else is documenting it because, well, if you've ever read my documentation, you would understand why. Um, and I look forward to seeing feedback and ideas from people. Just please, let, let's not talk about Windows. <laughs> and especially not that. <laughs> but anywhere else, anywhere else this will work. Thank you very much.